What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogjohn, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today we're going to talk about the poll I ran recently on my YouTube community asking what problems you guys struggle with on your data engineering projects. Most of you guys just answered that you are struggling with even starting your data engineering project. So let's talk about it. First, let's talk about some of the reasons people are struggling with starting data engineering projects. Personally for me, I think one of the major causes was often finding the right data sets. Another common issue is the right tools, you know, which tools should you be using? And another problem is, well, why are you even doing this? Like, what are you going to do after maybe even ingesting the data? So let's start there and start trying to figure out some of these problems. Let's start with figuring out what tools you should be using. And in order to answer this, I think the best way to do it, and I'm going to kind of steal this from Tuvu's uh, data analytics project video that she recently put out. Why not just look at a job description and figure out what tools people are asking for? So in this case, we're going to pull up a Smartsheets data engineering job description and look at it and see, well, what are they exactly asking for and what skills can you deliver? So just scrolling through their data engineering job description, what you'll see is they one have some sort of need for AWS or cloud computing. And this is often why I reference in terms of skill that cloud should be learned early because at this point, most of our work is not on-prem. It really is in the cloud. So you're going to likely want to use something like GCP, AWS, Azure, whichever tool you prefer. It's not that important. It's just important that you pick one of these because I think people are starting to understand that more than likely, if you've used one, you can use another. After that, you'll see two of my personal favorites, which are Airflow and Snowflake. So you will likely want to use those tools as well. Again, you can also use BigQuery, or if you want to be a little more maybe contrarian or a little more out there, you can try Dagster or Prefect. Those are also popular options, at least according to this Twitter poll. Airflow still won on the YouTube poll, but hey, you know, it seems like there's a lot of different tools that you guys can try out. Personally, I'd say just stick with Airflow to start out with. Uh, you can look at Dagster and Prefect, maybe more as you kind of get along. There are a ton more tools listed on this job description, but I personally wouldn't worry about it too much. Let's just start with these few tools because honestly, we're more focused on ingestion, storage, and then somehow displaying everything you've done. You know, visualization, developing an API, um, because honestly, even these three things can take a lot of time. I know I've got a video series that's all about two parts because I've never finished my data engineering project video series. Thank you all for being patient with that. As a quick update for that, more than likely what I'm going to do is completely do a different project and actually finish it first and then record it rather than what I was trying to do back then, which was working full time at Facebook, consulting, making content and trying to finish a data engineering project. So now you kind of have a good idea of your tools. Pick whichever cloud provider you prefer. I kind of like AWS or GCP. They're just easy to spin up. Pick some sort of tool to manage a lot of the orchestration. And unavoidably, you might end up picking this tool to kind of doing your ETL. Although Airflow itself is technically an orchestration tool, I do often see it being used as everything. You know, people will just create, um, you know, either Python operators or will use some of the operators that already exist to do the ELT or ETL. Obviously, there's a ton of other tools you can do with that now, you can throw in Airbyte or DBT or a whole host of other things. But let's again, just focus on this as a basic project. Let's not get too crazy because we wanna actually deliver this. And if you have to learn uh, six tools just to do your first project, you're gonna have our time just finishing it. So let's focus on delivering this project. So we've got Airflow for orchestration and kind of again, some ingestion in a way. We've got Snowflake or BigQuery for storage and for your final product. We'll talk about that later. First, let's find the most important thing, or at least some of the things that stop a lot of people, which is your data set. Data sets are hard because there are data sets that kind of come in all different shapes and forms. I think it's important to understand that, first of all, you are not a data scientist, meaning using a pre clean pre processed data set is not your goal. Your goal is likely to figure out how to develop a pipeline. So you need to figure out how to set one up and actually pull data from a raw source. And here's some great raw sources that you can pull from. One is Flights Radar 24, which will give you kind of all the information about where flights are currently, their latitude, longitude, and a lot of just other interesting information. And another one is spacetrack.org, which again, I'm showing here so you guys can go to it and that will show you information about where satellites are in space. Some other great data sets that I'll talk about later um, include New York Times uh, movie review data set. Also Predict It, which I've talked about before. They both have great data sets, but we're gonna talk about that at the end of this video. We'll give you some project ideas. The important thing when you pick these data sets personally is that likely you find something that has some form of API. This is because a lot of our work still involves pulling data via some sort of code or API. Yes, you're gonna do plenty of work where you just extract data from CSVs, but more than likely you're gonna to have to pull that data from an API into a CSV or Parquet file. 
load it somehow into your data warehouse. And again, now do the last part we're gonna talk about, which is figuring out what in the world you're actually doing with this data. Now, the easiest thing to do is create some sort of basic visualization. You know, with the flight radar 24, you could do something as simple as, you know, how many flights uh, exist or happen in a day. And then you can maybe cut that or, or segment that by, you know, where they're going or where they're landing. You could segment it by uh, flight, maybe time or uh, length of, of travel or distance of travel. There's a couple of different things you could do there. You know, just figure out some very basic metrics. Again, it could be as simple as count and just show that on a graph. You know, even doing baseline things like that, just get you comfortable with figuring out your why. Like, what are you actually doing all this work for? Personally, you should answer this question prior to doing any of the actual work, but for some of us, we just kind of do this work in a stream. Answering the why earlier is great practice because then when you're actually in industry, you get used to asking your analysts, your data scientists, whoever your stakeholders are, why are we building this dashboard? Why are we building this metrics? Why are we building, you know, this model, et cetera? All of that needs to happen because then you know if your pipeline's worth building. But let's look at a real project that someone did that actually got in the news using flight data, which was, if you haven't heard of it recently, a CS student decided to pull data about flights and specifically started to pull data about billionaires' flights and where they were and started posting them on Twitter. Now, obviously there's some questionable security issues here, but it was an interesting use case. I think this is a fascinating way of going beyond just a dashboard. You know, this person decided, hey, people are interested in knowing where Elon Musk is. Why not just tweet about it whenever his jet lands or wherever his jet is? Obviously, personally terrifying if I was a billionaire because, you know, that definitely puts a target on your back, but just an interesting use case in terms of how you can use this data. So you can do the standard uh, dashboard, or if you wanna have more fun, Personally, use d3.js. That's still something I occasionally like to play around with. Or if you can find something more practical, one great example is again, this flight uh, Twitter bot. Another kind of fun example that we saw, uh, thanks to Women's Day, was the Pay Gap app, where this person essentially created a bot to track down organizations talking positively about Women's Day, you know, posting about it, and used uh, public data to post how much they actually had a pay gap despite their pro woman stance. Again, I think it's just a fascinating use case. It's something that got a lot of traction. Now it's got 256 uh, Twitter followers only after one year of existing, which I just think shows the interest that people have in tools like this. There are a lot of fun ways you can use data. And I think one way is just creating a bot on Twitter that kind of shares some of this information. So don't think you're limited to dashboards. You can create again, API endpoints that maybe create some sort of model. You can create a dashboard or you can create some sort of Twitter bot that calls companies out for their unfair wage gap. Now that's enough high level, you know, how would you do a project? Let's actually dig down into ideas of projects you can do because that's what a lot of us need. We just sometimes need to hear concrete ideas to get started. And I'm gonna break this project into three different ideas, you know, beginner, mid and more advanced. Now for the beginner project, I'd say go look to use Cloud Composer or MWAA because those tools let you avoid having to set up Airflow from scratch. And so you can focus more on learning how to use Airflow and less on just setting up Airflow. And then you can say, you know, you've used GCP and AWS. So again, two birds, one stone. From there, you can use an API like Predictit's API that returns data back in XML. Kind of scrape that down and maybe start trying to look for possibly interesting trades. I'd look for trades that have maybe massive swings. Maybe if you could create some sort of model where you feel like there is some sort of edge in certain uh, swings or maybe like the craziest swings, the biggest swings day over day. And they could start reporting on that. It could be like, hey, you know the question, which party will take the house in 2022? There's just been a massive swing, you know, in the last 24 hours and you could post about it. And maybe after that, if you want to get even more creative in whatever display tool you use, you know, Flask, Twitter, et cetera, you could track some articles down that maybe you could discuss why. Now that that's a little more tricky, but again, Part of this could just be you creating a Twitter bot that posts out this information that says, hey, here was the most massive swings in the last day that happened on Predictit. And I can see people finding that valuable. Again, this is very simple. You're using uh, Cloud Composer to just ingest this data. You're storing it in something like BigQuery or Snowflake. And then after that, you create some sort of extra layer on top of that that posts outputs to Twitter. 
again, probably just via airflow, but I think it's kind of fun and very basic because again, you're not having to do too much in terms of like setting up uh, your infrastructure and you're focusing more on the actual work itself. The next project is inspired by Start Data Engineering. Um, if you haven't gone to that blog, it's great. It has a lot of great ideas on projects. One of their project ideas is on movie reviews. And it seems like they were just referencing any kind of just bland CSV about movie reviews. But instead, what I'd recommend is you go check out the New York Times Developers Portal and go pull movie reviews uh, live from their site via their API, and then kind of just use their project that they provided as a framework. What's great about this project is they really kind of broke it down like a recipe. You can just kind of look through the slides and see exactly what you're gonna need. They essentially tell you the prerequisites you're gonna need, everything from the fact that you're gonna need Docker, PSQL, an AWS account, and so forth. Um, they're gonna kind of show you how to set up Apache Airflow from scratch rather than, again, having it pre-set up. So I think that's kind of great. They're gonna have you set up several tools, including AWS S3, AWS Redshift, um, you know, IAM, et cetera. Just a lot of different important components that, again, when you're trying to show off to uh, future hiring managers, this will show a lot of great skill. And so that's what I think I really liked about this project is there's so much that they show here. They show you exactly some of the ideas in terms of tasks you could build in Airflow and even some of the ways you could write queries. So again, this is really a full blown project. I will say they don't really talk about data visualization or anything of that nature. So you will need to kind of consider how are you gonna display this data before starting this project maybe. Again, you can either pick a very easy tool like Tableau to use or D3.js and just do some basic visualizations with this tool. This is a little more straightforward, I think, as a project because most of these tools are very well supported, have a lot of community behind them. And that's what I think makes it very more mid-level. Again, there's a lot of components, but it will be something that if you've got some experience with Airflow and a little experience with AWS, you should be able to do it pretty easily. Now, finally, for people who are more advanced, we're going to go like the complete almost 100% open source route in tools. Almost. For this example, I'd recommend going to Spotsy's website. They do a lot of great projects in general. Um, in this project, they end up using uh, everything from S3, Spark, Delta Lake, uh, some data science stuff, uh, Druid, Dagster. It's pretty much a just amalgamation of every open source fancy tool you can think of. They say it's building it in 20 minutes. I don't know if that's true. It, it, I think it's going to take you longer than 20 minutes. But essentially with this project, you're going to scrape real estate data, the actual site itself. So you, part of it's going to be API, but some of it's going to kind of be based off the site. And you're going to be scraping a ton of information, cleaning up HTML. Again, something else that I think is very important. Uh, just a great practice. You're going to be implementing, you know, change data capture, and then you can do some data science work, uh, some basic uh, visualizations with superset. It's it's honestly a full blown project. This is going to take you a ton of time. I think it takes more than 20 minutes personally. I mean, I guess if you copied it, you know, word for word, or maybe it's going to take you 20 minutes, but I imagine you don't want to just copy this. That, that would be a, a bad idea. I'd say try it for yourself. Use this as a framework or an idea and kind of push from there. You know, I, I look at these as challenges more than anything else. Like if you're going to build this, you should just be like, I want to use, you know, Dagster, Druid, Superset, you know, pick maybe two or three more tools and then just try it. It doesn't have to look exactly like this person's in the end. It just needs to be close. So hopefully if you're out there and you're struggling to start a project, this honestly just helps you do it because that's what needs to happen. The biggest thing that holds most of us back is a combination of ambiguity and a lack of commitment. I know sometimes I fail to commit on ideas and then I just never execute. And so that's what's important. If you actually want to do this project, you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to be the one that says like, I'm going to do this project, pick some tools, pick some data sets and just set that end goal. Even if it's as simple as a Twitter bot that just posts the total number of movie reviews that occur in a week, something that simple can still just be a fun example or a great starting point for you to iterate off of. Thank you guys so much for watching this video this week. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.